Welcome to Jared Kimber's Super Over. Let's just start with uh, what's going to come up in, in the next week or so. Uh, Johnny Besto, 100 tests. Any thoughts? Brilliant. It is. It's, it's, it's great to see uh, somebody who I've got a soft spot for because I played with him. Um, I was a very, very unfit uh, overweight. I'm shocked at all of this. Fast polar <laughs> by the end of my career when Jason Gillespie said, Harmy, can you come and play for, you know, until the end of the season, Yorkshire? We've got no senior bowlers. We've got a bunch of 18, 20 year old kids who we need some experience just to tell them what to do in the dressing room. And there was six or seven of them, you know, Root, Besto, Rashid, to name three. Um, and Besto, you know, to see him go from that 19 year old who had, you know, unbelievable talent. Um, probably needed uh, you know a guidance they all they all needed guidance um but for to see the way his careers and joe's career and Riddle's career has developed is magnificent but best though especially to be out in Vizag and interview him for what is going to come in this we've kept it back for talk sport um the interview with him talking about his pride of playing 100 test matches for england and there was question marks which i thought was undue questioning his his place in the side before the fourth test match. You know, he scored four hundreds under Ben Stokes in fifteen test matches. He averages forty eight. He was the start of the Baz Ball really getting off the ground in in, in Trent Bridge against New Zealand. And um I'm so pleased and so proud of of, of Johnny making his his hundredth test match because we all know the story. His dad played cricket for Yorkshire, played cricket for England, um and somebody who Darren Goff speaks very fondly of. And uh, Johnny to emulate his dad not only to play for England but to play a hundred times, I think is a phenomenal achievement. Uh let's talk about the team a little bit. Ollie Robinson, you've uh, said some things about Ollie Robinson and, and been frustrated at him at times. He's currently injured, so I don't even know if he's going to be fit to be playing in the next test. What, what, where would you go? Gus Atkinson? What are your thoughts? Well, they say he's not injured. Ben Stokes said after the game he's not injured, which I couldn't believe that when he said that because i seen Ollie Robinson chase a ball and he, he I mean... He, he made, wasn't fit. He might not have been injured. He wasn't fit. No, me and Goffey could have chased it just as, as fast. He looked stiff. He looked as though he's a, a bowler who had not played since since July and I think I, I don't think Ollie Robinson's at a crossroads I think the ECB have got to be at a crossroads where they are with with Ollie Robinson and what what comes next because undoubtedly I think I think the world of Ollie Robinson is the bowler I think he really is the real deal I think he's a superstar bowler and I thought I was hoping the penny would drop when he walked off the field in July seeing Stuart Broad finish at the ashes at the end of the ashes and walk off and go off into the sunset Ollie Robinson, 30-year-old, go down the route of playing three or four first-class matches a year for Sussex, getting him in a position to play five or six test matches in the summer in England, see him in the winter, wherever we go, and just play a red ball test match cricket, and you've got four years taking 50, 60 wickets a year because he's got that talent. Um, I thought the penny might have dropped in that, and then he comes over to, to India, he bowled 13 overs. Look, India's a tough place to go and bowl as a seamer, um, but word was coming out this morning was he fully fit when he was he able to bowl Ben Stokes didn't bowl him so as much as Ben says yes he was fit Ben you didn't bowl him so we do we really know that um it's frustrating and it's where Robinson goes from here because ECB have stood by him ECB have given him a, a year contract two year contract um I, I'm looking at Robinson now and thinking does where does he where does he go from here where does England go from here because I know that for a fact because I was in that position during my career a couple of times and mine was always to fight and try and get back dropped in New Zealand you know question mark before the the ashes the, the Bangladesh after the Bangladesh series in 2003 I, mean, I went away and got fit and what it took to be a professional sportsman um Ollie's 30 now that moment's gone for Ollie you know is the when is the penny going to drop that he has got an unbelievable talent in test match cricket because at the minute <sighs> It's numbers, 50, average 22, 50, 50 test match wickets. But that doesn't look a 50 test match wicket bowler, what I've seen on, on, on show this week. It doesn't matter if you have a bowling average of 22, if you're not always available as well. And, and some of that is just injury, but some of that is also they haven't felt the need to give him the ball at times. If he was fit, they just didn't bowl him, right? So there, there's so many issues there. Massive issues. Uh, uh, what, what can they do in the next test? We, Stokes, I don't think, was that far away from bowling in this test match. Rayan Ahmed may come back, may not come back. What other changes do you see? There's a lot of time, which is good. You know, do they get Robinson fit? Can they trust him? Is the Dhamshala wicket 
going to be more inducive for seam, which we are hearing it probably Usually is. is. Yeah. Um, Wood has to play, so there's one seamer in. Jimmy's probably not going to be fit, so that's you know we'll say let's say Wood for for Anderson. Robinson's then still in the team. Do they go Gus Atkinson? Can you play Robinson? I mean Atkinson and Wood in in a two man seam attack. Do they go with one sp- one seamer and bring in another spinner? Will Rian Ahmed come back? Possibly, you could you could argue and say, well, uh, Stokes could be a second seamer and work his workload. At, if he's going to bowl half an hour a day between now and the end of the Test match series, could that half an hour a day be two spells in a in a test in a in an innings, which would be two spells of three or two spells of four overs? You know, bear in mind, Jimmy Anderson's only bowled thirty. What is it, Jimmy Anderson bowled thirteen overs in this test match? Or Robinson only bowled thirteen overs in this test match? So I think these are options that England have up their sleeve. Bashir will play Hartley will play does Dan Lawrence come in and play the extra batter um, I think these are the options I personally would like to have two seamers in Damshala have the two spin bowlers um, and then you've got a little bit of Joe Root that would probably be Mark Wood and I would love to pick Ollie Robinson because the Wood Robinson combination should work but what sort of state is Ollie Robinson's body going to be in in eight days time Looking forward to Dan Lawrence taking the new ball in the second innings um, up there. Uh, Boomer, do you think Boomer comes straight back in? Or now they've iced the Series 3-1, they just say, mate, you've got the IPL to come and then you've got a World Cup. We'd much rather you be fit for that. What, what would your thinking be? I'd want him, I'd want him back. Personally, I want to see him play because I want to see, I want to see the best player. I'm more mid as a selector, not as Steve Harmison, the fan of Jasper Boomer. If I'm a selector, I want him to play. If I'm Ajit Dagaka, I'm on a player. I'm not bothered about Mumbai Onions. I couldn't give him monkeys. I really couldn't. I'm not bothered. I really don't care. You know what he does for Mumbai. You know, M- Mumbai don't protect him when Mumbai are, you know, oh, no, no, I get that. I just mean that he's got three months of solid cricket coming up yeah. anyway. Mm-hmm. But and, and they want to win that World Cup. That World Cup means a lot to India now. This, this was big beating England. But them not winning a World Cup is, is a huge era. But if issue. I'm resting him again, if I'm resting him again, I'm still he's still going to play in the IPL. Sure. So for me, I look at this and do I want to go and win 4-1? I want to go and beat England 4-1. How do I beat England 4-1? Jasper Bum replaces for me. If I'm Ajit Agarka, if I'm Roald Dravid, you know, how many people are having a go at me? I'm, Roald Dravid's getting people having a go at him because of how well of England have played and have still been in the series. If I'm Roald Dravid, I want Jasper Brummer to play. Yep. I want Jasper Brummer to w- to play and us to win. And people go, all you doubters, we've beat England 4-1. And actually, England have played well over here. So that's why I'd be selfish and wanted Jasper Brummer to play. Um, final point, Ashwin, 100th, 100th test. There was a lot of people coming into this, uh, no, maybe not this series, but during this series saying he's not bowling as well as he has. And, and he wasn't, mm-hmm. right? There's that. Ma- I always say there's that magical period when a spinner's body is still like fully together, and their brain has gone into overdrive. And the last three or four years, he's been at that. It might just be now that his body can't get the same kind of revs than he used to uh, get before. But when he was needed, he got wickets with straight balls because he still is our Ashwin. What an incredible career he's had. Unbelievable career, 100 test matches coming into it. Goffey was right when he's saying, yeah, I ha- I, I'm not saying he hasn't bowled well in this series. I think he has bowled well in this series. He just hasn't gotten wickets. And what normally happens is a little bit like Joe. You know, you bat okay, you make a wrong decision or you make a you know, poor selection from an execution point of view and you get out. But you know for a fact there's a, there's a run coming around the corner with Joe Root. It's the same with R. Ashwin. R. Ashwin was always going to take wickets. At some point, a big bag of wickets was going to come, and it was when his team needed him. You know, Rohit Sharma, if Rohit Sharma, if he didn't have R. Ashwin, I'm not sure he wins this test match because he, he needed somebody to stand up and deliver. He got three wickets in a, in a period where if England had got 35 to 40 runs in that period without losing a wicket, game was gone. They're not getting back. India aren't coming back from that. So that's what this champion does. You know, everybody wants to hate him. You do. You want to hate him because of what he's done. And he's, he's always, he's, he's always that prickly character. He's that. He, he, he's going to be. He's the, the man. He's the only man that's going to mancad somebody on a on a pitch. And you want to hate him, but you've got to admire him. He's an unbelievable competitor and a champion. And another one like Besto going to get a hundred Test matches in the fifth Test. Thank you very much, Harmy. We'll see you for the next over. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.